Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to cover the Anaska one year later session. So with me today, I've got a couple of my colleagues with me. Uh, we've got Videk Edek from Fujitsu Enabling Software Technologies out of Munich, Germany, and Xinhua Kalabata from NEC, uh, based out of Japan. And I'm Roland Hockmuth um, with Hewlett Packard Enterprise in Fort Collins, Colorado. So we won't be covering a lot of overview or architecture in Manaska today. Uh, the agenda really is to talk about what's happened in the past year. So a little bit more of an advanced session. If you're not completely familiar with Manaska already, then there are a lot of other previous sessions that discuss that. And uh, if you want to know more, please grab one of us after today's session as well. Uh, so we'll be focused on today going through what we've done with metrics, alarms, notification methods, uh, some UI improvements, uh, enhancements to the Manaska agent, logging, as well as a few other miscellaneous topics. It's about a year ago that Manaska uh, made it into the OpenStack Big Tent. And since then, uh, in addition to doing a lot of development, we've also gone from a single vendor status to a diverse affiliation status, which means that uh, we're recognized for having multiple vendors working on the Manaska project. It's no longer just a single vendor solution. Some statistics that I'd just like to cover at a high level. Uh, and these are taken from Stackalytics. Uh, so the number of organizations involved is 31. Contributors, 97. Commits, uh, 1,075. Reviews, 4,080. And lines of code, 215,000 and something. OK. So each session, uh, we're going to have uh, a section that covers each uh, main area within Manaska. Uh, so this is kind of the overall architecture slide that we show when we talk about Manaska. Uh, highlighted in red here is the Manaska API, which I'll be going through and uh, talking about some of the feature enhancements in that area. Okay, so most of the enhancements around our uh, API have been uh, improving uh, performance, uh, mainly improving performance for the, uh, the sake of uh, interactivity from UIs. The first uh, improvement to talk about is the metrics group by capability. So the problem was that uh, up until this change, you could only request one metric, one unique metric per measurements or statistics query. Uh, and when you are displaying metrics in a UI, you're often displaying dashboards uh, that have multiple metrics in them. Uh, and so we, we knew about this problem for a while, but it started to become more prevalent at uh, charter communications where they had uh, per tenant dashboards. And these tenants had, let's say, 10 to 20 VMs. And they wanted to just display kind of a summary view of all the uh, relevant metrics for their VMs. So like they might have a, uh, a graph for CPU utilization for all their VMs. And within that graph, there might be 10 to 20 metrics. Previously, that required a single request per metric. And that was um, leading to some performance concerns. So our goal was to reduce that from a single request to one request, at least one request per graph. We added this group by capability. It's about 20x improvement in performance. Uh, at the command line, if you're using this, the way it would look is uh, with the part highlighted in red, group by with the asterisk there. That's our wild card for group by all metrics. We are in the process of at being able to group by dimensions in Manaska. So you could say group by service or group by, uh, in this example, probably be more relevant, is device. So this is for the disk space used percent metric for the last minute. That's what the minus one is. And this is showing, this is in our dev stack environment, that there are three metrics. They're all the same name, disk space used percent, but they have different devices. Uh, one is Vagrant, one is Vagrant Cache, and one is SDA. And each one is just returning three measurements per metric. So uh, if you think about this, in a Grafana dashboard, you can now query once, get multiple uh, time series arrays back for each thing, and then display that. That's how that fits. OK, so then there's this new metrics names resource. When you're um, navigating metrics, 
what you want to do is normally go from metric name to dimension name to dimension values, where the name and values are dictionary in Manaska. So, so the problem was users wanted to do this. We had one API that will allow you to do that. That was the get uh, metrics uh, API. And that would certainly re tell you all the metrics that are in the system. Uh, you could have millions of metrics in the system, of course, and then you'd have to do client-side filtering to figure out what were the unique or distinct metric names in there. So this API allows you to say, just give me the metric names. And, uh, and so that was the goal. Just give me the metric names in a sorted and paginated list. And that is the API that we added. There's a small example of it. Uh, so that part highlighted in red is the command line parameter that we would use to get that. And we're just showing a, a partial list here, CPU frequency up to CPU system percent is shown, but there's a few hundred probably in this list. Okay, so the next change to our API was to uh, address this other thing by navigating the dimension names and values. So if you have a metric name that's called CPU user percent, it could have uh, dimension names of like host name or service or resource ID in the case of a VM and there's, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 common dimension names uh, that you would find in your system. So again, uh, what we had before was just this metrics uh, API, say give me all the metrics, then you could figure out the dimension names, but that was turning out to be the bottleneck in our system. So the goal was to improve that, and the solution for both dimension names is up there on the right, but we added a uh, slash dimension names API and a slash dimensions names values API. Uh, this next example just shows the dimension names uh, query being used. Uh, so the part in red is dimension names list. Uh, with a metric name of CPU user percent. And this is in a dev stack environment, and there's only two dimension names in this list. Not a very exciting example, uh, but it's very simple. Uh, but there's two dimension names of host name and service. Okay, moving on from metrics, the next problem that we had was displaying all the alarms in your system. Uh, so if you want it to display like these summary views of the number of total alarms you had and the total number of alarms in the alarm state and the OK state, as well as their severities, you had to query and get all the alarms in the system and then do client-side processing again to group them and order them. Uh, and that was proving to be another bottleneck. So we, now we have this alarms counts uh, resource. So the goal was to prove that, and the solution was to add this alarms count resource. It will tell you the count of alarms, and you can filter on that based on the alarm names, the state or severity, or metric names and metric dimensions, and you can group them. A common way to group them is by the dimension of service, service being like Nova or Neutron. Uh, so this is an example of the command line of doing that. Uh, I've got a simple alarm count with group by on there, and we're grouping by dimension value and state in this example. Uh, there's only one, two, three, four, five um, rows in this table that are being returned. So there's one alarm for block storage, it's in the alarm state. One alarm for compute, it's also in the alarm state. Note, monitoring has 100 alarms, but they're all in the okay state, uh, as opposed to all the other services which are alarmed. Sorry, Nova Neutron teams for that. I did take that. Okay, so uh, how would this ultimately manifest itself in like a larger, um, view. This is just an example from our product from HPE called Healy um, Ops Console. And you can see uh, that we've got some summary views of the alarms. Compute has one in the alarm state out of a total of 35. And storage also has one in the alarm state out of a total of 142. Uh, telemetry, in this case, has just 126 total, and none of them are alarmed. And so that's what that last API would be used for. All right, and uh, now let's come to the next component, uh, Threshold Engine. Uh, so, uh, a thresh Molaska Threshold uh, holds the, the state uh, of all the alarms which are held by the system, and uh, the metrics which come uh, to Molaska Threshold are evaluated, and then uh, if the threshold is exceeded, 
uh, the alarm state transition messages sent back to Kafka. Okay, so the first uh, problem uh, we had um, was that uh, original aggregation functions from Monasca, like average, minimum, maximum, they all work on the evaluation period. It is per default 60 seconds. And uh, you always need to wait for, for, for a given uh, evaluation period for, for the alarm to transition, although the measurements are already there, which actually show that there is uh, change in the status of, of the measure of the measured metric, especially for the binary metrics where you have two states, null and one, like health checks and APA status. You would want this uh, alarm to transition immediately as soon as the new uh, value is there. So uh, we came up with this idea of the of the new function last, which actually is not an aggregation function, but it just takes the last value from the measurements in the system to evaluate the, the alarm. And here's a short example uh, how it works. So uh, we create the alarm definition using the last function, then send a metric to trigger the alarm, and when we list the alarms, the alarm is almost immediately in the alarmed state. We measured that uh, uh, latency bet between the uh, measuring the value and a notification of the system is uh, approximately about 350 uh, millisec uh, microsec milliseconds. No. Milliseconds. All right. The next problem uh, we focused uh, when uh, developing um, metrics generated uh, based on locks. Um, they are different in nature from the, from the traditional metrics because um, the traditional metrics, they come from the agent, the, the measurements are uh, taken regularly. So uh, the measurement is always there or if the system is not there, the measurement is, is uh, the measurements are not available, and uh, the uh, state of the Monasca alarm is then undetermined. In case of locks, it's different. It's more like event-like uh, uh, metric. Um, so, uh, if we have errors in the locks, we get the metrics. If there are no errors, we don't get any metrics, but we don't want the alarm to go to the undetermined state. If there are no, no errors, we want the alarm to stay in the okay state. So then we came with the, uh, with the concept of deterministic alarms. So the only two states which are possible for these alarms are okay, which is default, and alarm if the threshold is exceeded. And here's the example to show this, uh, how, how you can prove uh, the, the, this behavior, we just create two different alarms, one deterministic and another one undeterministic. Send a metric to trigger the alarm. At first, we will see both of the alarms in the alarm state. Then just wait a couple of minutes. And after listing the alarms again, if there are no new metrics which would trigger the alarm, you get the OK for uh, deterministic and undetermined for undeterministic alarms, so for, for the traditional alarms. Right, let's come to the next component, Monasca notification. As the name says, it is responsible for sending notifications to the user when the alarm changes the state. The first new feature I want to talk about is um, heat autoscaling. So uh, heat autoscaling was originally implemented uh, 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 for integration with uh, Silometer. And Silometer works differently uh, as Monasca. Um, Silometer notifies uh, all the time continuously when the, the alarm is uh, when the threshold is exceeded. Monasca sends the notification only once when the, when the uh, state transition occurs. And uh, 
this single shot uh, notification, it is not uh, sufficient for, for uh, uh, heat auto scaling. Heat is not uh, responding properly to that. So um, to address this, uh, we came with the idea of periodic notifications. So when you define the notification, you can give the additional uh, parameter to say, I want this, uh, this notification to be repeated as long as the, as the alarm is in the alarm state. There are some limitations on this. Uh, so the first one is uh, it is only for webhook notification and the second one, the period is only 60 seconds at the moment. It is totally okay for, for heat auto scaling, but for other use cases, it could be a problem. So here is a just simple example. You can see this argument period and uh, with this, you get uh, uh, the periodic notification. And here is a nice uh, way to uh, test uh, webhook notifications. It's really useful for, for testing. Right, and the next feature, uh, notification engine plugins. The, the, uh, the notification methods uh, till now were hard-coded, three of them were available, email, PagerDuty, webhook. Yeah, but um, you definitely would like more possibilities. And uh, to allow this, uh, we wanted to make this uh, pluggable so that different developers can work independently on, on implementing the, the plugins and also the operators can configure which notification types are available in the system. Um, so uh, we developed this uh, uh, pluggable mechanism and also three uh, notification plugins uh, for Slack, HipChat, and Jira. Here you can see the new resource for listing notification types. And I've got here a screenshot from the Slack notification, thanks to Shinya. And now, Shinya, your turn. Hi. Uh, I'd like to show you new Horizon improvements. Same as other OpenStack projects, Monasca has Horizon UI, and in addition, Grafana and Kibana are integrated. This list uh, bigger improvements of Monasca UI. I explain one by one the new feature on next few slides. First, uh, compound alarm expressions and match by field with autocomplete. Compound alarm expressions are great. It enables sub expression joined by Boolean operator. So, you can specify complex expression without knowing expression syntax. For example, CPU usage is high and memory usage is high. Much by parameter is useful, but a little bit difficult to understand. This parameter is used to determine unique alarms. To put easily much by field, change much by field by a match by field to autocomplete. Next, support for setting notification methods on all alarm actions. Notification is always sent when alarm state is changed by default. For example, OK to alarm, alarm to OK. But you may not need notification when tradition is alarm to OK. If so, you can select trigger when notification is sent by checkbox. Next, uh, translation support. Horizon Monasca UI plugin supports translation. Same as other Horizon plugin, it is integrated with Zanata. If you are interested in, trans uh, sorry, if you are interested in translation to your language, please visit Zanata. There are no necessary programming knowledge and development environment. You need to just sign up with Zanata. 
Xanata is very sophisticated translation system, so you can easily translate words. Next, Grafana 3 supports. Grafana integration is amazing. You can see metrics visually, and you can easily understand tendency and spike of metrics. Charter communications have great contribution to Grafana integration. Monasca data source and Keystone authentication with Grafana 3 are available in Newton release. This image shows example of Grafana 3 dashboard being used by Charter Communication in their production environment. All, all built-in graphs are available for visualization Monasca metrics. Next. I'd like to show you metrics DB status updates. Metrics DB is important in Monasca UI. All metrics are stored in metrics DB. Currently, Monasca has two choices, Influx DB and Vertica. Influx DB's clustering became closed source from 0.12 version. If you want clustering, you can buy license. HPE Vertica is best choice now. Community edition is free, and you can build clustering up to three nodes, and it can store up to one terabyte. If you have larger than one terabyte data, then you can buy production license. Uh, community edition of Vertica can apply to many cases. It supports compression, so you can store more than one terabyte, actually. But we think we have to support a completely free choice. So we are planning to develop new metrics DB, which has free clustering and no capacity limit. We hope we can introduce new metrics DB at next release. And we have a design session for Metrics DB at the summit Thursday morning. So I'm going to talk about some changes that have been made to the Manasca agent. Uh, just going back to this architecture diagram that is shown in the upper right here. So we, we do have a Python. Uh, Manasca agent. It's optional, of course. You can use the HTTP API completely without the agent, but uh, the usual case is to deploy the agent as well. Uh, one thing that uh, we started to see as a problem is just the amount of metrics that we were collecting uh, in the agent was proving to be another bottleneck. We were collecting metrics for many VMs or many APIs or uh, Open vSwitch. And, and, and so just the sheer amount of metrics they were collecting was, uh, it was serialized uh, to a large extent. And so we had to uh, parallelize that. And so we are using the uh, Python multiprocessing uh, module to um, start all our collectors in parallel. And so that removes that serialization bottleneck. In addition, we're able to specify different collection uh, intervals for each collector. Uh, and so if you want to go faster in some cases, that the default that we use is 30 seconds, you can do that. Uh, normally, though, you want it to go slower, for example, if you're getting capacity uh, type metrics in your system. So metrics that, you know, you don't need updates every 30 seconds, then, you know, we um, you can specify like a 10-minute interval is what we typically use for some of those capacity type metrics. Uh, we've also multi-threaded some of the collection plugins internally. Some of them, even after parallelizing them at the collection level, still take a long time. An example of that would be when you're doing HTTP status checks. Uh, if an API is down, it might take a long time to respond. And, uh, and so if you're trying to do uh, several hundred checks uh, and you, they're serialized, uh, that could be a problem. So that's all parallelized now. There's been some other plugins that we've done that in as well. 
We've enhanced uh, some of the uh, VM checks. One, is, is, one that's new is uh, a ping check. So uh, we've always had a check to, that is used libvert for um, uh, getting the status of uh, a VM. Of course, that's not completely thorough. A VM can be up and running, but the OS uh, could have crashed or panicked. So uh, the libvert um, check won't tell you that, but the ping check will. Uh, we've added Windows support. This is more in progress, actually. Uh, and along with that, Hyper-V support, which was the motivation for Windows support. Uh, we've added support for OpenV switch. Uh, Solid, SolidFire has added support. Uh, and we've been spending a little more time looking at things like Docker and Kubernetes. And uh, Mesos isn't on here, but uh, we've been looking at those technologies and adding support for those in the agent. All right. That's you. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I had a chance to leave. <laughs> All right. Oh, let me go back here. OK, so I'll talk to you about the um, two other new components in Manasca. Um, so same architecture. Uh, so we have a transform engine uh, and an analytics engine. And in the case of transform engine, what it does is it consumes metrics, just like the persister or the threshold engine. It does some processing on them, and it publishes metrics back to our message queue, Kafka. And the analytics engine uh, consumes metrics or alarm state transition events, and it does processing and um, with them. Okay, so let me talk about the transform engine. So this is a new microservice in Manasca. Uh, it's use cases. Uh, right now, it's been mainly focused on uh, aggregating metrics for the purposes of calculating object storage disk capacity metrics or object storage capacity metrics, or compute host capacity metrics, or VM capacity, and there's more to come. What do I mean by that? If you take like metrics from a number of compute nodes in your environment, or a number of Swift nodes in your environment, and you want to roll them up into some single value, uh, like calculating the total amount of CPU used per tenant, or calculating the total number of object accesses or bytes read or bytes received in Swift uh, per tenant, uh, you can do that. So the per tenant part is the new capability that you can do with this. And it's not restricted just per tenant. Uh, the language is pretty flexible. Uh, and so you can specify your own aggregations. We've been focused on these capacity type metrics right now. So currently, our metrics are aggregated and published uh, every hour. Actually, the, the actual aggregations are done semi-continuously. Uh, um, they're more frequently than every hour, but they're only published once an hour. And uh, this is uh, currently in deployment in our newly released Helion OpenStack 4.0. So um, it's not, its status is production as of today. And there's the repository of find additional information on that. Uh, there's also a very nice wiki uh, that describes that in more detail. Uh, Manasca Analytics, so unlike the transform aggregation engine, the analytics engine is uh, really under development. And uh, so don't try to take this and use it today. Um, but I would like to talk about it just to let you know what's going on there. So this is uh, uh, primarily there to kind of enable more advanced uh, algorithms and do more advanced analytics. The focus is currently on anomaly detection and, uh, and then reducing alarm fatigue via alarm clustering algorithms. Uh, so taking like unsupervised machine learning algorithms specifically and clustering alarms together uh, to group them into like a single incident and then um, uh, exposing that to the operator instead of each alarm that occurs. So instead of having hundreds or thousand alarms, if they are all similar, uh, hopefully you can group them together and present that to the user. There's a couple of algorithms that we've been using. One class, uh, Support Vector Machines and LinGAM, uh, Linear uh, 
non-Gaussian acyclist models, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember that one every time I see it. But okay, there is a repo out there. Uh, please take a look at that if you're interested in learning more. All right, turning it over to you, Vitek. Thank you. So apart from monitoring, uh, Monasca is also uh, logging. As you can see, the architecture is very similar to the monitoring architecture. We have the agents uh, which push the, the logs to the, to, the AP, to the API. Then we have the message queue and the uh, components which uh, process the logs. The one which is uh, new and it's an interesting one is the log metrics. It generates the metrics based on the, on the log entries, for example, for error messages. And then these metrics can be, uh, can be evaluated by the threshold uh, engine, which you can use for alerting. So it's a kind of basic implementation of uh, complex event processing, like uh, co um, combining different data sources and uh, creating alerting on this. As the database, we use uh, Elasticsearch and as the dashboard, uh, uh, Kibana. Uh, in Kibana, we have uh, our own plugin for authentication and we are uh, working on a multi-tenancy plugin for Kibana. So uh, this is the list of improvements during the last two release cycles. We have uh, completely reworked the, the API uh, and achieved uh, significant performance improvements with that. Uh, we also implemented uh, uh, the agents. We have Beaver and Logstash agents to, uh, uh, to work with the new API. Uh, then there is that new component, uh, log metrics, which allows you to, to create alarms and logs. And the work in progress is multi-tenancy. The log API uh, is deployed in uh, HP OpenStack distribution, Helion. Uh, logging support is also uh, included in the Fujitsu's product server view cloud monitoring manager. The deployments of Monasca, here's the list of the most important ones we are aware of. <laughs> So the, the first one is definitely Charter Communications, which uh, use uh, Monasca for monitoring uh, the production private cloud with two data centers and up to 700 uh, compute nodes. They're really testing, testing Monasca in real life conditions and uh, bringing up many issues which we then work on. So it's really great. Then uh, there is Fireware Lab, uh, it is a multi-region, uh, OpenStack-based cloud uh, here in Europe and also in uh, South America. They uh, use Monasca and uh, Silometer agents to, to monitor their OpenStack. They had a presentation last uh, time in Austin. Then, of course, the HP Helion OpenStack distribution. Uh, as I said, in, in Fujitsu's uh, product as well, NEC. Uh, plans on uh, adding Monasca to their product cloud solution menus. Integrations with other projects. Uh, I mentioned already heat auto scaling. So um, the, the enhanced uh, periodic notifications allow uh, the, the integration with uh, heat. It's completely functional. Then we have uh, Integration with Silometer, uh, the Monasca Silometer project uh, collects the, the Silometer measurements to the uh, Monasca API and uses Monasca as the data storage for Silometer data. Then, oops, sorry. Then we have uh, in work, in, 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 in progress work with a couple of projects like Congress, Vitraj, Watcha. Um, there is integration with Broadview, which had supports for a physical switch monitoring of uh, Broadcom switches. And uh, lately, there is an effort to uh, 
develop uh, Ansible installer uh, as part of uh, OpenStack Ansible project, which uh, I hope will, will develop good. Third party tool uh, integrations. Uh, so we have um, the lock agents, uh, Logstash and Beaver. Uh, here are the references to the pending pull requests to the upstream repositories. We have the in integration to Hipster. There is a Monasca sync which sends the Kubernetes uh, metrics to Monasca API. And there are Grafana and Kibana uh, integrations for the dashboards for uh, metrics and uh, logs. So we are coming to the end of the presentation. Uh, we would like to thank everyone who have, has contributed to the project, who has helped us. The list is for sure not complete. Please uh, apologize if, if, if someone is missing. We would like to thank everyone. Uh, there are two more Monaskas, dedicated Monaska sessions um, tomorrow. Uh, the first one, Monaska Bootcamp, which is the <laughs> hands-on workshop. Uh, good luck, guys. <laughs> so uh, please visit. You will be able to, to play with, uh, uh, with a ready environment, installed Monaska, and uh, try it out. And the second one is uh, about uh, monitoring Kubernetes with uh, Monasca. Thank you. That's all. So we have uh, four more minutes, I think. So if there are any questions. I don't know where is the micro. So uh, the question was, have we rewritten the threshold engine in Python? Uh, so the answer is no, we haven't done that yet. Uh, and we're not currently working on that. Uh, as some of you might know, many of the components are written in, were started out as Java. Uh, all of them are available in Python today, except for the threshold engine. And the problem there is, a lot of these stream processing technologies, and the one that we currently used was called Apache Storm, uh, but their, um, uh, the support for Python in Storm uh, isn't very good. Um, we do have some new components that are using uh, Apache Spark streaming, and so we'll have to evaluate that in the future. Yes, I would say so. Yeah, there, um, so the question was, does switching to Python mean uh, potentially switching the streaming technology that we're currently using? And although I haven't done a real evaluation of the Python support in Apache Storm, everything leads me to believe that yes, we would have to do that. Um, and so uh, that's why it's taken a while. Uh -huh. And uh, when virtual machine gets created, uh, the threshold uh, will receive the metrics and they'll create new arms. <coughs> but when we delete the machines, uh -huh. the arms uh, will stay. Uh, they will go into the other servicer. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some workarounds for that, but uh, I was wondering if uh, there are any uh, you know, conceptual plans to how to address uh, that. Yeah, so, so the question was, uh, related to the threshold engine again. Uh, Monosca is really good at creating alarms when VMs are created. Uh, and that's the way alarm definitions work in Monosca. Those are kind of templates for creating alarms. So we create these alarms, but then later on, the, when the VM is destroyed, the alarms transition to the undetermined state. Uh, do we have anything to resolve that? 
Uh, currently, what we do at HPE is we have uh, deployed our own scripts as daemons that, uh, that delete the alarms for VMs that have been deleted. And that's similar to what Charter Communications has done. And I think most people are going down that path. I don't have any plans right now to address that in something that's architected or designed into Manaska. We'd love to do that. We just haven't had the resources to address that particular area yet. But was the question actually about uh, deleting the alarms or about alerting when the, when the machine goes down? Yeah, uh, one of the ways that we wanted to address that was adding support for events in Manaska, but we haven't done that yet. So, any other questions? I think we're pretty much out of time anyway. All right, well, thank you everyone for attending. Grab any one of us if you need uh, or want to follow up with on Manaska related questions. Thank you.